everyone, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about basting. Basting is a very commonly used technique in sewing and it can be used for a lot of different purposes. So when we say basting, all that really means is a long straight stitch. You can do a basting stitch by machine, which is usually how I do it, or you can do it by hand with a needle and thread. There are two instances where I prefer to do it by hand. And the first one is when I'm basting in a zipper. I find that it really is more accurate when I baste by hand, especially if the zipper is going over a waistline seam or some other seam and I want to get those seams lined up. Doing it by hand is going to get it much more accurate. Also, when I'm attaching an underlining to a garment, I will hand baste those layers together. Underlining, I think, is not as common um, as when you want to sew two pieces of fabric together at the same time, so a little bit different from a lining. Again, I just find that the hand basting is more accurate when attaching the underlining to the main fabric. I believe hand basting is also used pretty often in couture sewing or when making like jackets and blazers or, or coats. That's not something that I have really gotten into. Um, I live in Southern California, so making coats is just not something that's very worthwhile for me. So I have not ventured into sewing those. When you need to sew a basting stitch by machine, it's super easy. You just put on your straight stitch and adjust the stitch length so that it's longer. So that's usually between four and five millimeters, depending on your machine. So the great thing about a basting stitch is that one, it's easy to sew and it's quick to sew and it's easy to remove. So all of those reasons together make it a really great stitch for using when you want to hold layers of fabric together temporarily. And there are a lot of different cases when you might want to do this. One instance is when you're making a muslin. And when doing this, you really don't need to sew that regular stitch because you don't need to hold your fabric together indefinitely. It's just temporary. It's just for fitting purposes. So sewing that looser stitch is totally fine. Plus it's faster and it's easy to remove and redo as you go through the fitting process. Another example is when you're sewing more than two layers of fabric together. So this might be like when you're sewing the yoke in a shirt, you might want to sew two of those layers together with a basting stitch, then pin that third layer and sew it with a regular stitch. Likewise, if you're sewing pleats, you can use a basting stitch to hold those pleats together. Or if you're sewing pockets and you want to hold the layers of the pocket to the front of the pant um, before you attach the waistband or the back of the pant, using a basting stitch there is really handy. And as I already mentioned, I love to use a basting stitch when inserting a zipper or attaching an underlining. And finally, one other instance that I thought of is for when I'm adding piping. So if I'm going to put piping into a seam, I'll first base the piping to one piece of the fabric and then I'll add the second piece of fabric. And then I will sew with a regular length stitch. I also really like to use basting when I'm sewing a knit neck band. Um, before I just take this over to the serger and start sewing on it, I like to baste it in first and make sure that the length of the knit neck band is the length that I want it to be. Another way to use a basting stitch is if you need to adjust the length of your seam line. One instance of this would be if you're making gathers. So if you're adding gathers to a sleeve head, to a skirt, a sleeve cuff, really anywhere, you can sew that long basting stitch and then pull the ends to make the gathers. I'm going to demonstrate that soon. Also, you can use that basting stitch if you need to ease in one piece of fabric into another. This is most commonly used with a set in sleeve. 
So you will add a line of basting stitches to that sleeve cap and then just very gently pull it to make it a tiny bit smaller. The, in this case, you're not going to see any gathers, but you will be making that seam line a little bit smaller so that it fits the armhole. The last instance that I have thought of for using basting, and I'm sure there are many more cases where you might want to use it, is if you want to create a guide or a fold line. So sometimes, really often, when I'm making a hem, I will sew a line of stitching a certain distance from the hem and then use that stitching as a fold line to fold up my fabric. And it's really a lot easier to fold it up and a lot more accurate. So I could, you know, get in there with the iron and try to fold it and get it all precise around the edge. But I find that having that line of stitching as a guide is more accurate, faster, and easier. All right, let's look at a little demonstration of how to sew a basting stitch and how to remove basting stitches. All right, I'm gonna do a quick little demonstration of basting. So basting, as I said before, is just a very long straight stitch. So all you do is on your machine, you will lengthen the stitch to between four and five millimeters. So here I'm, I have just a scrap of fabric. I'm gonna pretend that I need to gather this fabric or ease the fabric. So I'm gonna pull some long tails if you are just tacking a few pieces of fabric together, you don't really need the long tail, um, but it will make it easier to remove that basting later if you have the long tail threads. If you're going to gather your fabric with the basting, I really recommend having the long threads because it'll make it easier. So there are a few stitches. It's very fast because it's such a long stitch. So when you're done, if, if you need the long tails, you, I like to pinch the fabric to secure it and then pull it away and snip those threads. And if you're going to gather it, you will just pull the threads. And sometimes it's easier to pull the bobbin thread. So just take the thread and give it a little pull and it will create gathers. And depending how much you pull, it will create more or less gathers. Just a little bit of pulling on the thread could help ease the fabric, like with a sleeve cap. When you're ready to remove the basting, you can grab your seam ripper and I just like to cut it in a few places and then you can pull it right out. Sometimes you can pull it much longer. I would warn against pulling very long pieces of thread if you are using a delicate fabric like a silk or something that's really thin because it can kind of damage the fabric. So it's a little safer to cut the thread in a few spots and just pull a short thread. Now on the back, we have just this long one and we can just remove it. And that's really all there is to the basting stitch. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or other ideas about ways that you can use basting. I'm sure that I forgot a few. And if you have ideas for other videos, I'd love to hear them. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee or visit the pattern shop. The links to those are down in the show notes. Finally, I would be so honored if you hit the like button and the subscribe buttons down below. Happy sewing. Mm -hmm.